Gordon having a chat this morning on writing a book. And Liz knows, <laughs> I've been writing a book <laughs> for a long time. And I have the chapter headings down. It's only taken me months to do that. Um, and now is the time most people want to write a book. So Liz and I are going to discuss the ins and outs, the ups and downs, the trials and tribulations, and hopefully easy peasy ways to get started on writing this book. So come on, Liz, tell me or tell us why we should be writing a book at the moment during all the madness. <laughs> Oh, where to start? Um, I think I've heard several good phrases related to this. Um, one is what, when you're actually getting started. Let's let's go back a step. Should you write a book? Yeah, good question. I didn't want to write a book. You kept telling me I had to write a book. In are we going to talk about this for business? We're going to talk about this from a business perspective. Um, I think so. I mean, I think well, some of this might be useful for other people when we get into the getting out of your head stuff. So if we start with okay. yeah. You told me I had to write a book, but I didn't yeah. want to write one. <laughs> no. And the reason I told you you had to write a book was because you, you are an expert. True. You have a level of expertise that gives you competitive advantage. Yeah. Now, there are a lot of business people out there at this very moment who are in fear of losing their businesses. Mm. What they're looking for is competitive advantage. What, what can they do that's going to set them apart from other businesses that's going to get them noticed? Okay. Now, there's, there's obviously a, a raft of things that you can do. You know, you, you're seeing people out there being so creative on social media. And it's the, one, the ones who are out there just doing whatever they can. Choirs are doing brilliantly. I've been invited to two different online choirs so I can sing in my own home badly. No one will hear yeah. Wow. But, but the thing is, they've engaged with you yeah. and you're likely to then go and join the choir yeah. after it all because you've enjoyed it. Yeah. They've got up a sense of community. And that's the thing. It's all about engagement. Well, another way of engaging people is by getting them to read what you've written. Yeah. Now, you've got a level of expertise that a lot of people would love to have. I know. By putting it down in print, there is there is no doubt that people are impressed when somebody's written a book I think so many people have said oh I'd love to write a book oh yeah I couldn't who was it who said somebody actually quoted didn't we all have one book in us yeah there's another saying which is everyone thinks they've got a book in them and for most people that's exactly where it should stay <laughs> maybe that's my way it should stay if I'm better at talking than I'm writing however there is no reason why we shouldn't all write a book. If you've got a fantastic story, now I work with a, a fascinating um, older gentleman, this was several years ago, and I was doing a bit of ghostwriting for him because he couldn't, he knew what he wanted to say and he had yeah. all the facts, but it was kind of, it was just sort of threading it together and making it read like a story. But he had a fascinating career in the Marines. Now he wanted, he, he you know, he, he, he felt that he couldn't tell his family because you know what it's like when yeah. oh, granddad's, granddad's off on the war story. Yeah. Well, back when we were in the COVID lockdown. Exactly. Yeah, I survived the pandemic. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but yes. And, and actually, we'll talk about that in a moment because I think this is a perfect time to get started is to start writing a journal. Yeah. If you're worried about how do I write, just write down your feelings. Of, of, of how you're getting through each day what what you you know it's just it's like a diary really yeah it's exactly that I mean I look back at some of my diaries from when I was a teenager I used to keep a diary you know and I'd write things like I watched match of the day because I was really into football um match of the day and top of the pops and and I wrote all these programs that doesn't mean really anything but and it, yeah. you know my mum had cooked a particularly nice tea I'd written it in my diary but it's it's kind of it taps in yeah. you know it it reminds me of how the memory gone. hooks aren't they precisely and that's what this guy was really trying to do was was create some you know memory hooks but he wanted to share it with his family he didn't want to publish the book he just wanted maybe to print some copies and give them to his children and grandchildren as his legacy which oh. I think is really beautiful 
I actually think there were some fantastic stories in there that would have interested anybody mm -hmm. in the military because they would identify with it. And this is the other thing. You're writing a book about public speaking and you know, why people should. People are going to engage with it. It's going to resonate with them because they're in business. And yeah. what you're writing about, they totally understand. Yeah. But for me, so my question to you is, because you know me when I go, I can't write, and you're always... <laughs> there's, a, there's a habit of emailing me and going, where's the comma? Where's the grammar? <laughs> <laughs> which is fine because i'm no good at that sort of stuff because i talk so for me writing it down is is just horrible <laughs> it doesn't matter there is a brilliant phrase and i only used it yesterday to somebody um again somebody who's who you wouldn't think would write a book necessarily but is using this downtime, this isolation yeah. time to get started on it because she's always wanted to do it. And I've said, don't get it right, get it written. Oh. Just write, just write. Don't think about, don't think about your audience. No. Don't think about grammar and spelling. Don't think about, you do have to think a little bit about structure, but to be honest, yeah. that doesn't really matter because you can always go back and edit. So, I mean, I would, I would suggest having some ideas. If you're writing your life story, it's pretty much going to be chronological. Yeah. So you've, you've almost already got your chapters and you're going to be writing it in order. Yeah. You, however, or somebody in business might be writing about different aspects of the business. Now, you might find that one section of your business flows more naturally into another yeah but then you might have a chapter at the end that also relates to it you can move that around afterwards it doesn't matter just get it written i like that so i don't i can just sit and write not have to or type for me yeah and not say. have to worry about it okay so i've got my chapters yeah. as we all know yeah. and how, how long have i done <laughs> yeah but in fairness you are working as well this is true, so I do have the chapters. It tells me I get the chapters out every now and again and look at them and come away again. Because I don't know what happens is I get the chapters out and I know everything there is to know about the chapters. I, I know what it is. But my brain and I sit in front of the computer and my brain just goes blank and I'm like, okay, structure, structure of speech. No, just write it. Just write, okay. Just get it out. Okay. Whatever you're thinking doesn't matter if you're using slang, abbreviations, what have you, you can go back and, and, and alter that afterwards. Just get it out. Don't, don't the, break the flow. That's the joy of writing, isn't it? Because if you speak, you've done it, it's out there instant. But writing, yeah, you can go back and edit. And also, you, you've, you've brought up a very good point, actually. It's about being a, your real voice. Yeah. You know, I think, and I've, I've seen it a lot with, um, particularly with students' assignments, because uh, I teach part time and I've seen that they try and write their assignments. We tell them that obviously it has to be professionally written, yeah. but they use words that they clearly don't know what it means. And they thought, oh, I better chuck in a big word here to make it yeah. to like, really important. Don't do it. It's got to be authentic. Otherwise, people won't believe you. Yeah. If you start writing it in, in, a, in a, a language that obviously doesn't sit comfortably with you, then it's going to come across to the reader. Right. So I would say write it in, unless you're, you're writing an academic yeah, yeah. journal, then keep to your true voice. Yeah, no, I won't be writing any academic journals anytime soon. All right, so. Well, I'm writing a thesis on the importance of public speaking for business. So no. <laughs> Funnily enough, I was thinking of doing the masters and, and a doctorate and stuff, and it was the thought I'd have to write. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll put it off. I'll put it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I've got my chapters. Yeah. Uh, and I'm making every excuse under the world not to actually start writing. Should I have a regular time to write either every day or every week or something? Or can I come back to it when I feel like it, which doesn't really work because I never feel like it? Well, you've mentioned a word there that I really dislike. Should. Oh, the should word, yeah. Okay. Uh, that immediately puts you on the back foot and makes yeah. you feel um, that you're failing. So you could, you could, okay. you could build time into your schedule if that suits. 
or you could do it freestyle and just do it whenever you feel like it. I would share from my experience and from working with lots of different types of writers, people that write fiction, yeah. people that write nonfiction, they do tend to be more disciplined in that they have a set time where they write. Yeah. And a lot of that, and, and some of them actually do it at the end of the day. Now, my brain's pretty dead by the end of the day. I'm not sure I could do that. No, I'm no. first thing in the morning. So it might well be at the beginning of your day when you've had your night's sleep, you do two hours and you say, right, I'm not switching any emails on. Don't do anything else. Yeah. Just concentrate on, on the writing. So your mind is fresh and clear and, and you haven't got anything weighing on you. End of the day, you might have a bit of a legacy from whatever's happened during the day. However, some people are able to switch off from that. But I would say it's probably a good idea to have some allocated time yeah i'm thinking that now because it's about getting used to and the brain it's about the brain isn't it the brain get used to this is this is writing time and that would probably yeah. be easier to switch into that mode yes you, you're you're in writer's mode it's like yeah. you put your writer's hat on yeah i'm not dealing with any emails you shut the door can't be disturbed and if you sit and look at a blank screen for two hours then that's how it is but don't beat yourself up about it so there's a lot around mind, mindset, isn't there? Because I talk about that when people are speaking and they go, oh, it's about mindset. Absolutely right. And, and the more you're prepared for that time, probably the more easier it's going to flow because, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself this time to do this because I really want to do it. Is it worth giving yourself a deadline? Because I work, I'm, I'm terrible. I work better to deadlines in the sense that I suddenly can do that work and I, and I know how much time is, is to a lot so again is that a could rather than a should it's a could and it also is also dependent on what type of person you are yeah yeah when I was studying and bearing in mind I was I was married I was yeah. I had two kids I had a yeah, house I had <laughs> in full time actually I look back and I think how the hell did I get through that and I wanted to be I wanted to be because I used to look around the the, the group of, of other yeah. students I was working with and you know they'd be doing something every day my lifestyle didn't allow me to do that but I was still trying to force myself yeah to work like that and it didn't work luckily I had a very supportive husband who was who would look after the kids and do the cooking every yeah. weekend and I used to take myself off to the library and sit and work all yeah. weekend yeah so that worked for me so I think it really is about what type of person you are and, and what your circumstances allow you to do. But I would say it's one of those things that you're probably likely to say, oh, it's not a priority, and it gets pushed further and further down the... Yeah, the yeah. Then, and having that protected time means that you are incorporating it okay. into your yeah. show. Okay, so I could do this. <laughs> I'm liking so that. I'm going to move on. So we're now going to imagine people, imagine, Bev has written this book, well... This book has lots of words <laughs> um, and, and for me, this is the bit that I think probably confuses me and a lot of other people because, you know, we have, all have this new way of publishing now and, and a lot of people will go, or oh, I've done that and it's up on Amazon, I'm now a published author. And I find that quite difficult because anyone can put anything on Amazon and call themselves an author. So... For me, who, who always likes to know I am it before I'm going to proclaim it or I'm doing it before I can coach it, mm. I've got this book, luckily I've got you, full of unedited stuff. <laughs> what do I do with that? <laughs> For a start, if it's unedited, I wouldn't be putting it anywhere near Amazon. <laughs> yeah, okay. And this is all about, now, now particularly if you're writing this for business. Yeah. Think about, and I, I always say this, although you're writing the book because you want to write the book, yeah. you do have to think about what's your objective, what, particularly in business. Not, not so much for a, a personal book, because I think, you know, if you're writing fiction, maybe it's because you want to tell the story. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a, an end purpose. But if this, is, if this book is going to be part of your business toolkit, your business marketing toolkit, then there are certain, you know... Yeah certain standards that you want to reach because 
if you don't, if you put a book out there that's full of spelling mistakes, full of factual errors, not consistent throughout the book, it's going to damage your credibility. Yeah. People are going to look at it and they're going to get a rep, they're going to get an impression of you that isn't correct. Right. Okay. So it is your duty and your responsibility to make sure before you even commit it to print that it's been proofread several times. It's been copy edited to make sure that it's readable because it's so easy and we've all done it yeah. where we've written something. It makes complete sense to us, but the person at the other end, when they receive, it's like emails, you know, when they read it, it's like, what? what yeah. The, yeah. I'm going to say I don't, this sentence doesn't make sense. So it's really important that it gets read by somebody else. who can say, sorry, that bit. And you have to be prepared. You yeah, have to be yeah, prepared yeah. to take criticism. But it's really important that you do that before you get it on Amazon. Um, I would say self-published books now have got a better reputation than they did before. When self-publishing first came out, unfortunately, yeah. you did have a lot of people putting stuff out there exactly the way that I just described yeah. it. And that's what gave self-publishing a bad name. Now, with all the you know tools and tricks at your disposal, and there are lots of so many companies out there offering you know services to yeah. help you do it there's no excuse to be putting poor quality work out there really i've been told <laughs> and one thing i would i would add at this point it's not just about the the, the yeah. content but obviously that's that's what's going to sell it but you really need to think carefully about the cover oh no you see that for me is it's funny because i read a lot and i i read a lot of kindle books i i finally succumbed but it's the cover that makes me decide if I want to read it or not. See, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's all you need to hear. Yeah. And 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 I had a, a client who who used to call it um, lying on the Amazon ocean floor. <laughs> to be, you've got to swim to the top, which is rather nice for brilliant fish. Yeah. Because uh, my business is called Brilliant Fish. Um, it's it's about being seen. Yeah. And and I've seen some appalling covers. Of books they don't stand a chance because people get just like people judge people yeah. by yeah. the look they see a book and they'll judge it by its cover yeah unfortunately. absolutely so spend time don't I, I, I know people who've used their own artwork uh, there are some that have used it very effectively yeah. I have to say. We, we, we know somebody who's, who's done the same but I did have a client a few years ago who um, who used his own artwork and it he thought it was great and it really wasn't and it also didn't portray the content of the book but again i suppose it's like when i talk about audiences when you're speaking to them you know the speech can't be because you love the speech it has to give something and it has to resonate with the people you're speaking to and the right language and and the one thing i do know is a book cover has to entice Yes. straight away it's a bit like food isn't it when you see a menu and you go oh that food looks lovely you know it's not going to look like that on your plate absolutely. <laughs> absolutely so right so i've written this book yeah best I, i've i've spewed it out onto the page <laughs> i've not used my own graphics i have gone to well for me i'll come to you but i've gone to get it edited so um what does that actually mean when, when you send it to someone? Because in my head, I'm thinking you'll just go through and check the spelling and stuff like that. So what does it truly mean when someone edits your book? OK, so proofreading is, is, is literally that. It's, All right. it's reading the proof. So it is looking for grammatical errors, spelling errors, maybe a punctuation, yeah. you know, and, and, and uh, you know, I see it so much now. Apostrophes. <laughs> yeah. And, and and a very unusual use of the comma. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not you. I'm talking talking about. No, other no, people. I do. I'm, I very unusual use of any type. Of actually, I usually call it a bizarre use of a comma. Uh, so yes, it's checking for that kind of thing because things like that can stop people. Not, can stop people reading. No, no. I you yeah, know, I get that. Read fluently. Yeah. So you know, some people and I get particularly annoyed by it. So I'm particularly sensitive to that she kind. Is. Of it's so, very sensitive, which is good for me. Good. If I remember to check it, it with the first before I put it out there, 
yeah. yeah, it works for what I do, but it gets really irritating when you're reading a newspaper or a book and you can't help but proofread. <laughs> um, and copy editing is more about the consistency, the checking, particularly in fiction, you know, checking that characters' names are the same oh, yeah. way through. Uh, an editor, a proper editor, would would um, make suggestions right um, uh, for where it could be phrased better or um, maybe check even um, historical facts okay in, in historical fiction you know it might be did this really happen then is that around a legal thing is that around if someone makes certain statements or or dates and things in there that could pertain to real life if you like whether it's historically or is there a sense that they have to have those facts absolutely right? Well, I mean, there, there are plenty of books out there with hysteri hysterical, historical facts that are incorrect. Oh. But it's, it, if it's written in, in the, the context of fiction, then most people can get away with it. Yeah. If they were writing a, a factual book about history, then that would... Yeah, know, that might oh, bring all right, okay. Views. But uh, yeah, an editor would, would go into far more depth and is looking at consistency and um, uh, I, had, I had a situation with one book where a character was suddenly introduced but actually was talking about the character as though they'd already been introduced so oh, I right. loved it because in the mind of the of the of the author yeah, yeah. they knew who, how this character fitted into the plot but hadn't actually introduced it so then had to go back and do a rewrite so so that's the thing be prepared that once an editor's looked at it that you may have to go in and do some work afterwards so it's not just a question of right well once the editor's done it i can then publish it there may be some and, and hopefully there would be more work to do because you want to refine it yeah, and that, yeah that's the best way to look at it is that you're refining it into the best you know the best version it can be oh sounds good so i've now got my book it has been to Liz, who has proofread it and scribbled all over it with red marker pen, just like school. Then it has gone to be edited and some more red marks have got over it and I've had it back and I've rewritten those bits that I've been advised how to rewrite and stuff like that. So is that where you get more support from somebody in how to rewrite certain bits or how to create that flow? The editor would give you guidance on that. Right. So, yeah. so that's useful. It's your expertise. Yeah. So they would say, this needs clarifying. Right. Got it. Go into more depth here because I didn't understand what you were trying to describe here. Okay. So, so then... It can be quite detailed. Yeah. So at that point then, so I've got this lovely document and everything else and I'm all, all excited. Um, I'm assuming these days there's no sort of limit on how big or how small this book can be. Interesting so, question. Yeah. So yeah. So we now have all this. Is there a sort of a, a thing around how big or small this book should be? The best. There are protocols. There are you know um, um, not standard sizes. What I would say is research your market. So uh -huh. if you're writing a book, a business book, you you often find that business books are smaller. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because we'll, we'll talk about pitching to agents and publishers yes. sort of in a little while, but business books do tend to be a little bit shorter. Fiction, I mean, I've just, um, do we, do we're just launching a book for a client that's at nearly 800 pages. Now, that in itself has brought a raft of problems because, sorry, challenges, because of people reviewing it. Yeah. Viewers aren't going want, to want necessarily commit the time to reviewing a book on, uh, that's about, a lot of pages <laughs> it's, a story. it's a fantastic book i've just bought my sister a copy and she's well into it but so you do have to think about right. um where your book is going to sit so okay. in the market okay so whether it be um on amazon whether it's in a bookshop think about and have a look at similar books in the same genre so that you can get an idea of how many pages it should be because also what you don't want to do is ramble on and on and on and write loads of extra stuff the book's not going to sell because it's too big 
and, and and that for me has always been one of my problems because um you know as you know and a lot of people who know me if i can say it in 10 words i don't want to then have to say it in 110 words it's why i never yeah. win awards because i can't fill those boxes in sure so this idea of the size and where it's going actually that should be the very first thing we think about shouldn't it uh no i'd oh. still say write it write it because yeah. you can then edit down because what you'll do is you'll be pouring out all your expertise and then you'll probably find a lot of it's repeated. Yeah. It. So you can refine it down and then edit it down and then you'll know your chapters and, and what can sit. Oh, that, that's, that's a really useful thing to know because, yeah, just the getting it written and then thinking about it during yeah. editing. Well, yeah. Okay, so. that word count while you're writing because yeah. that would actually melt your brain. Yeah, I couldn't cope with that. <laughs> <laughs> with, yeah. so i've got the book now all beautifully written proofread no more red marks all over it it's been edited it's just the right size for people my target group who will get the information they need to do what they need to do right so i have this this is the time i think when it gets confusing so self-publishing we think well i've got this i'll just upload it to amazon and away we go or should we then use a publicist or should we then find a publishing house? What, what comes next? It, it will really depend on how quickly you want to get the book out there. Obviously, if you self-publish, it's quick. You can literally, it, it's available within hours of you. But is the marketing harder if you do it that way? Do it yourself. Yes. Yeah. However, don't assume that having an, an agent or a publisher is going to be the the be all and end all because they will expect you to do a lot of marketing yourself oh right in fact they will expect you to produce a marketing plan to show how you're going to promote the book oh so you might as well do it yourself gone are the days well no because the, the it's the distribution so if if you just want to upload it to amazon and and obviously amazon is you know for all intents and purposes it's the largest yeah. platform um, that you can be seen on. There are other platforms. Yeah. Um, however, most people think of Amazon to go to. It also depends whether you just want to do it as an ebook or whether you want to do it as a print book. Can you do both? Of course you can. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you just go to um, a, a printing company. You still have to upload it to Amazon so that people can then yeah. order a, and Amazon would then fulfill the order through the printer that you're using to, um, to print the book. And now uh, this is interesting because um, I suppose for me, and if I'm assuming it, I, I'm going to assume a lot of other people are assuming this, but when you upload it to Amazon, as a book and you tell them and i've seen it, you tell it what price it is and all that sort of thing you fill in all the things and you have an amazing um cover that when people buy it amazon have it printed but is that not the case no you you, you you've contacted a printing company who've got a stock a, a stock in oh, right. and then order some in and then amazon will monitor how quickly the book is selling i now, see so Oh, yeah. so you need I'm, the printers. I, yeah. I hadn't realised that. Yeah, yeah, it's not Amazon don't print it. She, she tells us that as if we should know that. Oh, no, actually. Actually, we, we don't, because you just assume, I'm going to order, because we don't all understand the way Amazon works. And I think even when we buy stuff off Amazon, you know, we, we buy it, it arrives. And if I buy a book off Amazon or Kindle, um, either downloads or I get sent the hard copy. So in a sense, I suppose for most of us, we just think, well, they deal with that. <laughs> Yeah. So we you mentioned printers. So um, now my assumption is that you just upload it to Amazon and someone buys it and they deal with all that printing stuff. Is that right? You, if you're going to use Amazon and Amazon's own printing services, you would upload the 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 manuscript, yeah. the the book, to something called Create Space. And they format the book for you because obviously, and it's quite a process to, yeah. to um, and there's lots of people again out there who you can pay to do it for you, but it's a relatively straightforward process. The only difficulty comes when you're uploading diagrams and pictures. And okay. Yeah. Because if you think about it in a work of fiction and I've done it where you've uploaded to Kindle and, and, um, and it's fiction, 
it's it's relatively straightforward you've yeah. just got to get the margins right and your pagination right you have to be very careful of indents for paragraphs there's a right. protocol to the way books are written and how the the chapter headings are done and that kind of thing but it's it's relatively straightforward when you're doing the print book you can use create space again you upload the manuscript yeah. to to create space and then as people want to buy a copy they can um it's like print on demand okay so they can print a book as people order them however you don't always have to use create space you can go to a printer and 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 uh i've got this with a client at the moment where um it's actually um ingram spark which is one of the hugest yeah uh, hugest um printers uh, Amazon will order stock in from Ingram Spark. So when they see a number being ordered, they'll order several copies. Oh, That's right. why quite often you'll see it says temporarily out of stock or. Oh, or only so many left. Exactly. So they're ordering direct from the printer. And there are lots of printers. I mean, you could use a local independent printer. Yeah. If necessary. And then Amazon order direct from them. All right. Well, that's, that's cleared that up. Um, presumably there isn't a right or wrong way with that is that just about no, it's what you feel comfortable doing i the only thing i would say is just be very very careful about um you can spend a lot of money buying in all these other services however it may be worth it to you because of the time it will yeah. take you to do it if you're not technically minded then it is worth paying somebody to do it yeah it's okay. a, a tried it i wouldn't want to do it again it's 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 laborious i remember one sunday seriously i was going to throw my laptop out the window it, yeah Reading. okay are, you can take it in the stride so yeah yeah so i suppose it's which bits yeah it's, it's like with any business you know out, outsource the bits that you are really struggling with and do the yeah. bits that you're okay with absolutely but to obviously with you back to your original question which was is it better to self-publish or get published You've got to do the marketing either way. The thing right. with a traditional publisher, yeah, and there's several elements to this, but the thing with a, a traditional publisher is that, bless you, Steve, the um, thing with a traditional publisher is that uh, they have got the distribution. So they can send it out to bookshops. They prepare what they that call was, Yeah, that was going to be my next question because when you self-publish, what you really want to do is get those books into bookshops. Yeah, um, and a lot of speakers that I work with are authors, so they've got their books, and they'll take their books with them when they're when they're speaking to sell. So um, yeah, the, I assume then. So a publisher has those connections and those links. Whereas uh, they've, they've got the whole um, distribution network that yeah. they, they bring into play. So they produce something called an advanced information sheet, which has got all the information about your book. It's got the cover of the book. They send that out to all the independent bookshops, the online platforms, yeah. depending on, on which company you use. And there are lots of traditional publishers that have got self-publishing arms that you can also use. Okay. Again, costly service. But for a tradition, if you've got a traditional publishing deal, they put that into action for you as part of the deal. So if we self-publish, um, then um, if we've done everything ourselves, it seems to me that that bit next about getting into bookshops is, is hard work. So you've either got to pound them round with a copy of the book and all the rest of it. But if there's some, so if I came to you and I said, Lids, look, done it, brilliant, woohoo, what do I do with it now? What happens? I've come to you as the publicist marketer. You want to raise awareness of it, don't you? So yeah. you want to be targeting the people that you want to buy the book. So know which, be very, very clear about who your target market are and which genre your book is in. So if it's a business, yeah. book, what element of business is it helping? Yeah. Because the more knowledgeable you are when you start approaching bookshops, the more seriously they're going to take you. Now, you can imagine they get inundated with um, self-published authors. I can Ooh. imagine. Yeah. Um, Another unknown resource, or, or little, little, it's probably well known, but maybe underused resource, is the library. Oh, right. It is definitely worth donating a copy of your book to the local library and offer to do a talk. 
This is where you come in. Yeah. Because you can help people, you know. Well, talking, yeah, I know that if you get out there and talk about your book into all sorts of almost social meetings and or business meetings, people will buy the book. Yeah. Because you, you've managed to get that message across about why they yeah. should buy the book. So yeah. I think that's really important. And, and I hadn't thought of libraries because they do put on quite a lot of live. They are so supportive, seriously, really supportive, particularly of local authors. Yeah. And they'll host it for you. And, uh, and you can invite, obviously invite people. Yeah. You've got obviously press releases. You want to go yeah. to, you know, business media of your local media, but also regional and, and national. If it's that, you know, if you've got a really unique message. Yeah definitely worth you know getting press releases out to people you need to sort of build up your own media database so find out who your local papers local radio station that you do a lot on yeah. radio you know how effective that can be uh, yeah find out which magazines yeah your target market read yeah is if you can get a book reviewed particularly but even just you know what you don't want to have to do is spend a lot of money on advertising well, yeah, and I think we all know that advertising anything is, is problematic. Let's say problematic and, and expensive at the yeah. moment. So exactly. it really is about, like any other marketing, certainly for business, it's about building up those contacts, building up those areas, like PR, like we do with PR, yeah. we have to find those people. So, exactly. so But also, when, you're, when you are putting the book forward, think about the story behind the story. Yes. So it's not just here's my book, this is what it's about. Talk about what, what inspired you yeah. to write the book. They, yeah, they're the why. people. Yeah. You know, they're not, not just about the content of the book because the likelihood is there's going to be hundreds of books out there. Talking and to about be fair, I think the most successful are those ones that have this good story. It's like everything. If you've got that good story behind it, and we know someone who suddenly had the most amazing story behind it that made you want to go and then read yes. about, you know, exactly. so... Um, yeah, I'm with you on that one. Get your story yeah. there. And, yeah. and, and be prepared to market the socks off it because yeah. it's going to be down to you and, and it's being very active on social media and making sure that you're using all the platforms, again, where your target market are. Mm. You know, if your target market aren't on Instagram, do you want to be channeling energy into that? Maybe yeah. actually LinkedIn would be the best place to be. And not just talking about the book, sharing the expertise from within the book yes raise awareness of the book yeah okay well, i have a question now um in terms of uh i go to a lot of things and people give away the book a lot of business people give away the book and then you'll see um them claiming that they are a bestseller right. <laughs> and i get really confused it's like just some people buy the book and then you give the rest away and Aren't people upset if they bought the book and they turn up you're giving it? Yeah. Explain that to me in a way I'll understand. I suspect that they've participated in one of these programs. Now, there are so many out there charging tens of thousands of pounds to make you a bestseller. Yeah. And it's, it's, you're right. There is, a, there is an element to say it's a good idea to give away something free to raise awareness of the book. So for instance, if you were advertising your book on Facebook, say you did yeah. a Facebook ad, what you might do, it's very hard to sell from cold. Yeah, no, no, yeah. So if you were doing a Facebook ad, and I would recommend them, I mean, that you know, they can be very effective for a very small, you know, a relatively small amount of money. The more money you put into it, yeah. the better result. But the, the thinking behind it is, if you offer something free, so you might do a, one of the chapters, you might adapt it as a free giveaway. Okay, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, download. get the first chapter, yeah. Exactly, yeah. a download or a PDF or yeah. a, um, just a, a little taster so that it gives people something for free yeah. that works. So it's got to be effective. It's not just a read this. It's a something that they can put into action straight away that works and then that's the teaser yeah for the ad that then comes next which is an advert for the book okay and, and so really in a way these bestsellers have just bought all those books to give out yeah. at events and that's yeah. what makes it a bestseller they bought their own 
it, it, you can put bestseller on anything, can't you? What, what does it mean? Well, you know, then, and again, if it's, a, if it's a Sunday Times bestseller, you're going to take it. Yes. Take it. Yeah, I, yeah. I would always look at the, the credentials of anyone who claims that it's a bestseller. Right. Okay. All right. What so, are they measuring it against? And I have another weird question, another odd question that um, is coming from me. Um, I love, I get given books by people who've written, if I've been working with them, and I'm sure you do, you've been working with them, and they'll sign it for me because I'll have been at the, the launch or thing. Yeah. I have this ongoing little thing with one of my lovely, lovely, one of my clients and, and author, and she signs the book for everybody. And I keep going, stop signing the book. You're devaluing my copy. <laughs> I... Again, I think it depends on the circumstances. I know somebody who goes and gives a lot of talks. Yeah. And the audience want him to sign the books because yeah. it's there. Um, but then he's selling the books. He's not giving the books away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I guess that's just a, just a me going, don't... It's like, I wish I... Had, special. Yeah. I want, I want to go to a launch of something, a fiction that becomes a bestseller than a film, and I want to be able to say, I've got an original copy signed... <laughs> Absolutely. Well, they can't sell millions. Of, they can't sign millions of. of yeah. <laughs> but it, it does. It's. It. I mean, traditionally, you'd have a book signing. So I. Yeah. And that's another thing that, it, as part of your marketing kit, yeah. is to have a launch because it does bring it to the attention of lots of different people. You yeah. just invite your, your friends and family and supporters and what have you. But that's something that you can talk about and share on social media it raises your profile and, and it kind of makes it, I think it's almost like a rite of passage when you've written yeah, yeah. a launch, you know, yeah, and yeah. Think, you know, think, and think about the venue, you know, if you were, if you're writing a, a, um, a, a, a book about public speaking, you're not going to go and do it in a, I don't know, in a, in a restaurant, you're not going to do a launch in a restaurant. You'd want to do it somewhere appropriate. Yeah. Like a theater or, um, you know, a exactly. big old church to be fair, because it's, yeah, no, I get that. I do get yeah. that. So the ultimate question is, and I suppose this is, the answer to this is going to be how long's a piece of string, is the expense of publishing your own book, because I think there's, there's an idea out there that actually doesn't cost anything to publish your own book. And, and I suppose that's right in a way, but if you want to publish a good book that's going to sell, which bit should we actually be investing in? <laughs> oh, oh, I think interesting you should say it doesn't cost anything because it's how much do you value your time? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what it costs you. Yeah. You do need to be prepared. I think your first port of call has to be the proofreading and the editing. Yeah. Because without that, you're not going to sell any books anyway. You, and it's it, the impact that that could have on your credibility as a business person. Yeah. Really damaging. Yeah. So definitely worth in, in, investing there. I think, um, you know, stuff like formatting, if you're going to do it, um, the, the self-published route. And I would like to talk about traditional publishing in a minute. Yeah. If that's okay. Because, you know, there are elements to that that can, that obviously everyone wants their book published, but um, self-publishing you could technically prepare yourself using software out there if yeah. you're that in mind yeah. and the marketing you've got to be prepared to to put the work in but you could do that yourself yeah paying somebody to do that is going to make it slightly easier for you particularly if they've already got established contacts yeah i would say if you're going to invest your money anywhere do it in the proofreading because you it doesn't matter how many times you've looked at it and how many times you've checked yeah. it, there will be mistakes. And using your friend's auntie's cousin <laughs> who did an English degree isn't the same. No. You, know, you want somebody who knows what they're doing day in, day out. Yeah. Uh, because it is, it, it is a skill. Yeah. You, know, it yeah. is, you want something that's going to be ultimately readable. And I suppose what you really want is someone who's not going to go, that's a lovely book. You're actually looking for someone exactly. to look at and go, you can sell this book. You want a critique. Yes. You want yes. a critique. And I would always say that just because, and, and this actually relates to people who are writing their own book, just because somebody said to you or several members of your family have said to you, 
oh, you ought to write a book doesn't mean to say that you should. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I said the word should. Actually, I think in that case, it's right. Case it applies. Yeah. <laughs> However, you may have a brilliant story. Get it written anyway. Yeah. And then yeah. decide. Yeah. Then decide. You know, and, and, and this is where, you know, talking about the traditional publishing process. Yeah. You have to be prepared to take the knocks that when you think what you've, you know, you, you've written a fantastic piece of work. Yeah. You've had it proofread before because you need it proofread before and, and edited before you send it to the because again you want to be pre presenting oh, right. you don't necessarily want them to be seen does it have to be complete because um, you know way 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 back before all this internet stuff there used to be thing you could send like a couple of chapters and a synopsis and if they liked it you can i mean with with you with this with uh non-fiction you only have to do the first three chapters Right. And send them an outline, and then and then if they like it, yeah. they'll sort of give you an advance, and you can carry on writing it. So yes, but you want those first three chapters to be the best version. Yeah, you, yeah. You just rush it off and think, oh, I'll send it off. What they're looking for, and this and this is, brings up another important point about being active with your target market. Yeah. You need to make sure your website is absolutely bang on. Right they're going to be checking you out when they yeah. submit a piece of work when you submit a piece of work if they like it they're going to check you out on social media they're going to check you out on your website yeah. make sure that you're writing in all different forms um and this is where i, I would always advise clients to do blogs yes because um it, it it shows the breadth of your writing you know it's not i can i can write this actually i can write blogs i can write copy for my website i can do interesting and engaging yeah, yeah. on social media so you do need to be proactive on those beforehand and have built up an audience because a publisher will want to see and they ask you this you know yeah. on the questionnaire that they send you and agents they'll, they'll ask you what your your following is on social media yeah i suppose for them it is all about the money in a way is is, of it is. is have you got a platform to actually launch this to make money for the publishing yes. company as well exactly it's got to be worth it to them if, if you're submitted to them and saying well I, I haven't got anything they're going to think well why are we going to bother wasting our yeah. time yeah we need you to support us and we'll support you so it seems to me that the best route is if you've self-published done all the things you've suggested and invested the money where it should be marketed it to become to get your platform and your readers is it worth then if going to a publisher and going, well, look, it's done really, really well? Yes, if if you haven't gone to them in the first place, yeah. it's kind of either or. Yeah, I think a lot of people now are thinking for speed they'll get it up there and try and get some sales. Um, I think uh, the current statistics are that you need to have sold about five thousand before it would come to the attention of an agent. Right. Publisher. Yeah. But they're not going to find it independently without you sending it to them. Yeah. Now, it might it. be that you've, exactly as you say, you've decided to self-publish and then once it's got a bit of a success, um, send it to them. Yeah. yeah. And obviously with, with non-fiction, you send it straight to a publisher. You don't go yeah, through an agent. Yeah. With, a fiction, you, with fiction, you go through an agent and then they pitch to the publishers for you. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's either or really. I mean, a lot of people would rather go the traditional route first and then, you know, when they've had a number of rejections back. And, and one thing I would say, you know, these people are professionals. When they advise you to do something, it's worth doing. Yeah. You know, not just saying it to be spiteful. This is what they do day in, day yeah. out. So their, their comments are really, are meant to be very constructive and it can hurt yeah because you know we've just spewed our baby onto paper and <laughs> exactly i always relate writing to be to having a baby yeah yeah that, usually that bit just before launch is the bit where you're in labor yeah yeah the most painful bit because you are letting your child out onto the onto the wide world and it, it <laughs> really really hurts but yeah you do have to be prepared to take criticism yeah, and yeah. listen to it you know yeah that's why it's good to do it with professionals and people who aren't friends and family because yeah yeah 
you know, friends and family might be a little bit worried about upsetting you. Yeah. Whereas you need a critical friend who can say, and, and I was really lucky. I was, I had a partner who, who was a writer and he would, and I would critique it. Yeah. And I'm quite, um, not brutal, but um, clear about things. And, and he did take it. You know, he yeah. did say, yeah, yeah, you've absolutely got a point there. I'll, yeah. I'll tweak that. I'll change it. Okay. Well, I think so to summarise, let's see if I've got this right. What I need to do now is just write. Don't yes. worry about how it's coming out or anything else. Just write. And I could set myself some time every day, maybe even if it's just an hour, to yep. get my mindset right into going, right, I'm just going to write and not worry about anything else. And then when I... Or can I just interject yeah. because actually this, this goes back to what we were saying about what suits your lifestyle. Yeah. It may well be that you don't do it every day, but you say, right, every Saturday I'm going to lock myself yeah. away yeah. and I'm going to, now I work better like that yeah. because I set myself a large chunk of time aside. Yeah. So it's whatever works for you. So, so really, yeah. So um, yeah, work out what, so I can work out what's right for me with everything else going on. So I don't have all that pressure on me and, and I know that slots, set aside for that so i can get my mindset done so i've done this amazing book and then i need to think about sending it to um a proofreader and an editor and i especially uh because i know my challenges in terms of writing and things yeah. like that so it would be daft of me not to do that yeah. so i would do all that and i've come to you obviously because <laughs> that's what i go to so i do all that and and then one of the things i'm going to say now is for me I would come to you because you know me well enough to understand the language that my book yes. needs to, or the personality my book needs to have because I would want people to recognize me. Yes, very much so. The writing in the book. So I think if I had a piece of advice to give anybody who's going to do this, find someone, not a friend or a relative, but someone who knows you well enough to know not only what you want to say, but how you want to say it in print yeah yeah so i'm gonna do all that and i'm really like oh my god and, and i've got this amazing amazing graphic that i found and then you said no <laughs> would it be brutal? yes i probably would actually yeah yeah because again liz knows the sorts of graphics I love. <laughs> my little sparkly unicorn going it's a real business book sparkly unicorn. <laughs> so i'm gonna do all that and really i suppose then it's a case of really understanding the, the bits that follow on from there but i think in order to get started just write i think that's the best piece of advice you've given me just just get it out there do it, Mind don't, dump it. Uh, yeah don't think about your target market or yeah. your you'll find that as you're writing it that will probably develop yeah because you'll be thinking what do i want them to understand what yeah. do i do you know what i mean yeah so, yeah but not at the very beginning so what we need is a checklist from liz she may already have one, I don't know, but I need it. A checklist of one, just write. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe just, just following it down so I can look and go, oh, yeah, right, I'm, I'm just going to write. And oh, I've done that bit now, now, now what? And, and yeah. things like that. So um, I'm going to ask Liz to let us have one. And if she hasn't got one, to produce one. Right. Checklist. Just, just, yeah, just write that. Checklist. I, I love checklists because, uh, in a way, I like, if it's outside my comfort zone, if it's something. Yeah slightly outside of what I do I like to be able to go right I'm just writing I'm just writing um, yeah. and then when I think I've finished have a checklist go okay what do I do now oh now I go and send this to be proofread and see if it's enough so yeah. I think a checklist would be a great idea and if Liz I does mean, there one, is, there's lots of support out there there's loads of websites I would just be very careful what you commit yourself to that's that's we're going to commit to liz on this one because liz has given us all this information and help and support so let's all get liz to do a checklist and not cop out of it <laughs> because she doesn't like writing <laughs> one, actually one thing i would one thing i forgot to say that i think is worth worth mentioning uh, particularly if you, you're you're obviously if you're going down the um publishing traditional publishing route yeah. There is a, 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 a book out there. It's called the Writers and Artists Yearbook. And your, yeah. your library will have a copy or you can, you can yeah. buy one. Obviously, I get one every year, which is updated. And it's got the name of every agent and every publisher in the country. And media, actually. It's got uh, national media in there as well. 
and it's worth if you're thinking of pitching to a publisher and there, again read online about how to create a pitch letter because again yeah. there's a formula to writing a letter be very specific about who you're targeting don't just send it out to every publisher yeah. find in this book you can find the publishers that specialize in what you're writing about right books yeah and it's not worth your energy just doing a blanket approach well no it's like speaking i say to people don't pitch yourself forward to be a speaker at an event where none of your target market or no one's interested in what you've got to talk yeah. about it's the same principle isn't it yeah yes. find the right people yeah, yeah. exactly okay. it's, it, you know you can waste an awful lot of energy but for for a couple of hours just to go through the book see who publishes your type and, and again you know once you've finished your book yeah. go and have a research of who else has written books like you? What do they look like? How long are they? That kind of thing. Be very specific. And then you can sp target a specific person within the publishers if you check out their website. Great. So you, you're, just, you're just increasing your chances. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Sorry. I'm, I'm going to go and just write. So Good. thank you, Liz, for all Good of fun. that. Maybe we'll continue with this as my journey moves forward. She's my accountability right. person. And, and I can do, I read the book now, I'm going to have another try. <laughs> see what happens next. And we'll see how this journey goes forward. So thanks for listening. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you need any help or you've got any questions, you know, Liz is always there to answer questions and things. So we'll put all her details on there. And it's Brilliant Fish that you're looking for. Liz Gordon, Brilliant Fish. But I'll give you all the details. So great. Talk to you again soon with another expert. Bye. Thank <music> you.